morning. Today is Thursday, May the 6th, and uh, it's good to be on this morning, uh, to be with you. I slept a little later than normal this morning, which was good. I guess I needed it. I hope you had a good night's rest last night, and we had a, a real good, good time of corporate prayer last night. Uh, I just want to continue to encourage everybody to mark your calendar. The first Wednesday night of every month, we have corporate prayer and worship. I cannot stress how important that is and just encourage you to, to really uh, come and give your, give your heart to the Lord in worship and in prayer. And you, I promise you, you will be encouraged and uplifted as you, as you leave our corporate prayer time. But this morning, a couple of, couple of things. Uh, we really need to pray for Barbara Ramsdale. She has had just uh, the last couple of months between the tornado hitting her house, uh, taking out her car as well. Her daughter-in-law, um, Glenda, having her kidney removed, removing the cancer. Then Barbara took a spill, took a fall, and she's banged up. Sometimes it, it happens like that. But Barbara, I just want to encourage you. I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged by seeing your steadfastness through those kinds of trials. And that's really the witness that we have when we face things like like life that happens sometimes. It's just our steadfastness to the Lord. Continue to pray for Constantine. He is... Um, He's doing well after his last chemo, so we're still continuing to pray that God would heal him completely of that cancer. And then I want to ask you to pray for a couple of our young adults who will be leaving on mission here in the next few days. Um, Vadim Petresco will be leaving. He was going to go to Ecuador because of safety reasons. They had to change course, and he's going to the Tennessee area. I spoke to him Sunday. I thought he might be disappointed, and I loved his response to me. He said, you know, God had called me to go. He didn't tell me where to go. And so um, just what a witness there. And also uh, Abby Hammonds will be going. She'll be serving the whole summer uh, at a Baptist camp uh, as a counselor and different things. So be praying for them. Don, I hope you're on this morning. This is one of your, I think this might be your favorite song, but it was a song that was on my heart this morning. Majesty, worship His majesty, unto Jesus be all glory, honor, and praise. Majesty, a kingdom authority. Flows from his throne unto his own, his anthem raised. So exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus. Jesus the King, majesty, worship his majesty, Jesus who died, now glorified, the King of all kings. Let's sing that to him again, let's worship him. Majesty, worship His majesty, unto Jesus be all glory, honor, and praise.
Worship his majesty. This morning I thought we would finish Galatians, but I, I realized there was just too much there to rush through this last chapter. Chapter 6 we're beginning uh, today, and just remember when we finish Galatians, we're going to go right into the book of Ephesians. And so if you want to go ahead and start reading through that book, I would encourage you to do that. Um, I find that the more times that I read through a passage or, or a book of Scripture uh, at one sitting, uh, the Lord just really begins to work his word in my heart. And so um, Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, he's, Paul's kind of giving his last exhortation to the body and encouraging them in some of the body life issues that, that we have in the body of Christ. And I use the term body life because it is a body. It, Paul clearly states in a couple of different passages how the, the church is just like a body, different parts. And, and there's that body working together while there are different parts. Each part has its own uh, purpose and, and uh, abilities or giftings that God has given that part for the edification of the whole body. And I encourage people all the time that if all they're doing is coming to Sunday morning services, uh, while that's good, and I encourage people to do that, that if we're not plugged into a small group or a disciple, uh, discipling group, then we're really missing what God has for us in the body. We need one another in the body. And here's one of the reasons we need one another in the body, because the truth is every one of us fall in many different ways. And we need others in the body to encourage us and to exhort us when we fall, when we, when we sin. And uh, that should be the heart of the body of Christ, not to condemn when someone falls into a sin or a transgression, but that we might encourage one another out and on the other side of that. I'm convinced that oftentimes we're not vulnerable, uh, honest in the body of Christ with each other, because most of us have probably experienced a time where where we uh, either were found out, uh, not intentionally, or we went to somebody to say, I'm struggling in this area, or I have fallen in this area, and we've been shunned or put off. And uh, it may be that pride keeps us from doing that. That's probably the second reason that we're not as vulnerable as, as we need to be. James says that we're to confess our sins to one another so that we might be healed. He's not talking about a physical healing there, that we might be healed spiritually, be be whole spiritually. And so there's a gift that God has given us in the body of Christ where we can, yes, we confess our sins to him, but we need to confess our sins to one another because all of us have an area of sin that we might have a propensity towards. And I need guys in my life that can pray for me and encourage me that I can be accountable to in those areas, just as well as I have guys that need to be accountable to me in that. And I have that through a discipling group that I'm a part of every Friday morning. And so it's just encouraging to have that. Paul says in verse 1 here, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, no matter what it is, in any, that word is specific there in the Greek, uh, meaning a plurality, meaning a various type of transgression. And of course, a transgression is not just a sin. A transgression is, is where we willfully disobey uh, that which we know is to be a command of God. And so if anyone is caught, and it's not the sense of your, your hands caught in the cookie jar, but trapped, if any of us are trapped uh, in a transgression, and isn't that what sin does to us? It traps us, and the enemy can really keep us trapped in that sin. 
if we don't have someone that we can go to and and confess that to them and and in a heart that says man help me in this will you keep me accountable will you pray for me will you encourage me otherwise that sin will trap us and any sin that's that's unexposed any sin that is not confessed any sin uh, that is not shared the enemy has ground in that to just wreak havoc in our lives and so it is a healthy thing unfortunately uh, it's hard to find those individuals that you can go to and say, this is a sin that I have been trapped in. Will you help me? Will you pray for me? But can I encourage you to find somebody uh, that you can do that with? He says, if anyone who's calling you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. This word spiritual doesn't mean perfect, but you who you are in a fellowship with the Lord, you're walking right. You who are spiritual should restore that person, restore that person back into fellowship and in the body of Christ. Um, because sin not only separates us from our fellowship with God, but sin can separate us from our fellowship within the body with each other. It can separate us in our fellowship and our relationships of our family. And so the one who's spiritual should restore that person in gentleness, not harshly, um, not, well, how could you, but in a spirit of gentleness. And here, here's what he says here. Here's why we need to have that kind of attitude and that kind of heart towards one another who's been trapped in a sin. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. You see, all of us, all of us face temptation. Temptation is not the sin, but he says, listen, uh, you who are spiritual, restore that one in gentleness, but at the same time, keep watch over yourself, lest you too fall in sin. And there it's an attitude that says, you know, I recognize that except for the grace of God, there go I as well. That I can, I can fall into that same sin, I can be trapped in that same sin, so I need to keep watch over myself. He says, bear, with, uh, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Here in context, he's talking about the burden of sin. Bear one another's burdens um, and so fulfill the law of Christ. The law of Christ, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So when we bear with one another, when we encourage one another, when we suffer with those who suffer and rejoice with those who rejoice, we're fulfilling the law of Christ, and that is love. And he encourages us to do that. Then in verse 3, he says, But if anyone thinks that he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. I've, I've met a lot of Christians that I'd like to buy them for what they're worth and sell them for what they think they're worth, right? The moment we begin to think that we are all that, we're in grave danger, we're in trouble. None of us is higher than anyone. All at the ground, at the foot of the cross, as Billy Graham said, uh, is level. In other words, we're all in the same place. We're all prone to sin. We're all born in sin. Only by the grace of God have we been saved from our sin. And so he says, man, if you think that you're something, if you, if you get haughty spiritually, you're deceiving yourself. And can I say that when we get that way, we are prime bait for the enemy to come in and attack us. Um, verse, uh, verse 4, he says, But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. Um, another way of saying this uh, is that, that we will in our walk of Christ, when, when we have success, if you will, um, and, and we take pride in that, and that's not a wrong kind of pride, um, but we have that pride in ourselves, not comparing ourselves to one another. You know, comparative Christianity is just damnable, and we all have been in that trap before. Uh, I like to say it this way. If I'm trying to live my Christian life comparing my walk to others, um, I can always think that I'm high and mighty. You see, because I can always find somebody, you can always find somebody that seems or appears to be a little bit less spiritual than us. 
and we get into that thing, well, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I'm not where that person is, or I'm glad I'm higher than that. See, that's comparative Christianity. Listen, each man stands or falls before his own maker, his creator, is what the Bible says. So our account is to God and God alone. Uh, my, my standard, if you will, the standard of the plumb line in, in your life and in my life in, in, in uh, righteousness or being in right standing is according to the Word of God. It's not comparing myself to anybody else. And so uh, that can work two ways. I can, I can look at somebody that I perceive to be very spiritual, and then I can get down on myself because <laughs> I'm a bozo, y'all. You know, and and if if I compare myself to other people who appear to be spiritual, then I can really just get trapped, and I will never measure up. I'm never gonna I'm never gonna be what I want, and the enemy defeats me in that. So it works both ways, and so let's compare ourselves. Let's let's compare is not the right word even. Let's measure ourselves according to the Word of God and to Jesus and depend on the Holy Spirit to conform us and transform us into the likeness of Christ. That's what he's working to do in our lives. And then lastly, verse 5, for each will have to bear his own load. In other words, each of us is going to have to give our own account. And so I encourage you this morning, um, number one, pray and ask the Lord to give you somebody that you can be uh, vulnerable with, that you know is going to love you, not going to pat you on the head and say it's okay, but somebody that's going to be honest with you, that you can love, that you can confess your, your shortcomings to, your sins, so that you don't get trapped in those. And if you have someone come to you in that, restore that person in gentleness. It's his kindness, the Bible says, that leads us to repentance. And so, uh, let's bear that in mind. Let's keep watch over ourselves, not comparing ourselves to anybody else except the Lord Jesus Christ and depend on the Holy Spirit of God to conform us and transform us into his likeness. Well, I love you. I pray that uh, all of us would pray today that God would give us an opportunity to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart. And if we come across somebody that we recognize where the seed has been planted, that God would give us the wisdom and the words uh, to help cultivate that soil where the seed has been planted. And then lastly, uh, pray that God will allow you to be used uh, as an instrument of his as he saves someone. What a great day that would be. Well, I look forward to seeing you, being with you on Sunday morning in person or in line, uh, online. And I pray you have a, a good weekend. And I look forward to seeing you on Monday morning where we'll pick up in the sixth verse of Galatians chapter six. I love you. Have a good day. God bless you.